Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to One Million Cats on this okay. windy day in Albuquerque. Here we are. I didn't take my hair. Good morning, everybody. It's nine o'clock on Wednesday morning, and that means it's time for Million Cups. So we're caffeinating entrepreneurs every Wednesday morning at nine, and here we go. Oh, so. no, it's just me. It's just you? It's because I touched the screen. Oh, okay. Don't touch anything. Okay, but I was going to move caption up. Can okay, do that. Do that. But that means I'm touching the screen. It's, it's your computer. You can touch it. Just kidding. All right, so here's our mission. We are interested in promoting entrepreneurship. And the way we do that is by lowering the barrier of access to entry to resources about education, connection, people. All kinds of people come to this. They know all kinds of things that you might need to know as an entrepreneur. And some of them will trade war stories when they're not on record. <laughs> I know I will. Okay, and how do we accomplish that mission? The Kauffman Foundation gives us a, a back end that helps us with scheduling. They also provide training to the organizers. And the organizers coach uh, the presenters so that there's a consistent program wherever you go in the United States. If you drop in on Wednesday morning at nine o'clock on a Million Cups chapter, um, you, you'll see a lot of people you don't know, but the format will be consistent. Um, we're the only ones in New Mexico, but there's plenty in our region. We are told by our regional rep that we are uh, rocking it as far as our region goes. So uh, we'd like to steal from other people when we can, but it looks like uh, we're doing quite well on our own. But I encourage you to visit some of these other locations. I've been to Amarillo and Lubbock. I've been to El Paso uh, virtually. Uh, it's fun giving million cups uh, outside because people get a fresh look at your uh, company. And if you're really an enthusiast, you can go to Million Cups in New York at seven in the morning local time and then come to Million Cups here at nine. Yeah. So here's our key pillars. Presentations, not pitches. So presentation, uh, well, you're about to see one. But what happens in a pitch? Um, your company is flawless. It has everything it needs except an infusion of capital to the people you're pitching to, right? <laughs> and as soon as you get that, uh, you're going to ring the open bell at NASDAQ and Google, Facebook, and Apple better watch their buttons. Uh, but that's not really true, is it? Right. So everyone who's an entrepreneur knows that there are challenges in your company. There's people challenges. There's logistical challenges. There's stuff you don't know, which is the hardest thing of all. And you're going to need some help. So when you present here, you're opening yourself up. You're showing your vulnerabilities, your challenges, the things you don't understand, the things you don't know how to do, and the things you need help with. And the community's here to help you. Uh, we are run for the community by the community. So all of the organizers are volunteers. We are not masochistic altruists. We all get something very valuable out of participating in this. And I'd love to tell you about what I've gotten out of it, but you'd have to sign an NDA. Okay, so we are radically and intentionally inclusive. All kinds of people, all kinds of entrepreneurs, from whiteboard companies to mom and pop brick and mortar operations, the big companies that honor us with their presence here at Million Cups and don't really need anything from us. All of those folks are welcome and all of those people are pe uh, people you could learn something uh, by talking to. All right, so this is our mission statement. Really, it's just what I've said. We're trying to connect entrepreneurs. We're trying to get people to learn things. We're trying to help you to teach things to other people. You don't have to be an entrepreneur alone, uh, despite like the novels and movies about that stuff, right? You need a community and we are that. Uh, it's easy to apply to present. Um, just talk to any of the organizers or pound your way through the website. And uh, if you have a for-profit business, and that's uh, defined as a business that sells goods or services for more than it costs to produce them, not hard. And uh, if you've done a sale to someone who's not your mom, uh, you're a for-profit business and you're welcome to present here. We'd like companies that have been in existence five years or less because they're still fumbling and it's pretty easy to see what's wrong. Uh, we'll follow up, we'll assign you a coach, and we'll give you all the help you need to give a stellar presentation. Here's the organizing team. I'm Paul Sutter with Equiseek. Lisa Atkins is here with Fat Pipe. Eric Renz Whitmore, probably remotely at this mo uh, moment. Uh, Adam Sparks Brecko, whose face is covered, but is going to present on March 15th, right? So come back for that. Sonia Dewing, who's here in the flesh. Let's hear it for Sonia. And our newest organizers, Takeo and Oscar. Uh, uh, from Legacy Family Documentaries. So uh, great bunch of people. Uh, talk to any of those and uh, get yourself on the program if you haven't presented in a while. We also thank our sponsors, Fat Pipe, which has been our host for eight years now. It's been a great place to be. Bravo, Fat Pipe. 
Jason calling photography, always making us look good, uh, even in the screenshot era, right? More than organized, organizing your stuff, your thoughts, and providing creamer for your coffee. Foundation for Sustainable Living, providing the coffee. Noventa, the custom software, great software and donuts. And Invive Solutions tea when they're here. So thanks to our sponsors. We couldn't be uh, one million cups without you. <clears throat> and thanks for joining us. I'm going to hand it off to Lisa. Thank you. Let me just uh, get the slideshow up. I'm going to read one on. Uh, Zoom audience, see my screen. So, Kikoa, our new organizer, actually got to coach Mark Kelly with Photon Rainbow this morning. He's not here, so I'll step in. So I kind of handed him off to yes, you, you <laughs> which is great. Um, so, Mark it, owns a solar company. We're going to hear all about his unique approach, and he's also a new member here at That Vibe. So, of course, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much. I just want to say that I'm super proud to be part of something like this and um, to be encouraged to be a speaker. Huge lesson I've learned so far. There's no I in the team. Uh, and that's something you'll see here. And I just wanted to hash out like everyone that's involved in this and getting help. That's like, if you're trying to do it, you need people for sure. So we're Photon Rainbow. Oh, did I do that? No, I did not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, kind of touchy. I didn't realize the captions were going to block my face. I, I can okay. see when I touch the screen, I screw oh. up the remote. So oh, okay. I can move this out of the way, That's but right. just know. You don't need to see me. Uh, so, <clears throat> fifth grade, I think I tried to mow lawns. <laughs> and then I tried to get people to let me clean their ponds. Uh, and then I actually went to India to study yoga and I started teaching yoga classes. That's super hard. Hats off to yoga teachers to keep everyone safe and to lead a fun class. Um, I put, this wasn't my card. I wish I could find it. It was way more like bougie than that. I, I wanted to do gold collar pet services, treating animals like royalty. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went back and I got my undergrad in business law. And then I went back and I got my MBA at Anderson. Uh, awesome. Super glad I did that. And then Camdero is like a, I made up that word. It means camping under the stars, like the root words. And I had an online outdoor sporting goods store, ran out of money. And then Photon Rainbow. That's me, kind of at the height of my, my door knocking career, maybe 15 pounds less. Uh, <laughs> so I was working three part-time jobs and I wanted, I had this like moment, like I'm deep, like philosophy degree, right? I wanted to do something that either got me outside, helped other people have a relationship with the environment because it breaks my heart that some people never have gone camping, fishing, hiking, things like that or I wanted to protect the environment. And um, so I was really putting it out there, looking on uh, LinkedIn to see what kind of jobs were there. At a networking event, I met a couple guys from Vivin Solar, who you, you got, you, some people may have heard of. Three days later, I'm in a polo with an iPad, knocking doors. And um, I, I had to be like, oh man, they didn't tell me it was gonna be knocking doors. So I had to be like, oh God, do I really wanna do that? It ended up being fun, but I, I worked for a lot of like uh, national companies, um, turned out I knew the guy that started New Mexico Solar Group. He offered me a business manager position, so I jumped on that. And then um, I just got to a point, I've, I've always been wanted freedom and I've always had the entrepreneurial mindset. So I broke off and I started Photon Rainbow. There's a model in our industry where it's like a brokership or a, de or a dealership where, you know, if you go to Mark's Costa Chevrolet, he's, he's not Chevrolet, he's a dealership. So what we would do as a broker is get customers sign them up with an electrical contractor but then sometimes that electrical contractor is subcontracting to the actual electrician so it's like whose customer are you and, and there's a lot of customer service issues with that I had another heart to heart especially with my wife and i was like we're going for it we're going to be the contractor i won't be able to sleep at night thinking i never went for it so we made the jump we got our um, electrical contractor's license um <clears throat> And we do it a lot better. This, this was like how I was trained to do it before I started Photon. A lot of uh, saying whatever you have to say, a lot of not being truthful. Um, actually, the company I started with, Viv and Solar, they got sued by the attorney general for not telling people that when they were signing up for a lease, 
that the uh, that the price that they were paying for the power would go up three percent a year. So the attorney general slapped them with like twenty two counts of stuff, everything from racketeering to high pressure sales tax. I don't want to do anything like that. Like this is life. Everyone's a person. Everyone deserves respect and all that. This is actually an ad that 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 I used to use and stopped. It's like you don't get paid to go solar. You get tax credits, but got away from that. Um, so actually our values are quality, love, and impact because that encompasses what we think is doing solar the best way with dedication to doing it right and caring about people. Warranties, performance, where do the panels come from? Um, and, and, and what is the actual impact? Because we actually use panels where nothing comes from China which nothing against China, but there's some solar brands that have got, that actually got slapped with tariffs because they were using unfair labor practices like child labor basically. So we don't touch any of that. We wanna have fun, educate people, um, do it with networking and referrals and word of mouth. I wish Bill was here, Bill's one of our sales guys. So this is actually a conference we went to about how to get more referrals. Um, when you get referrals, we actually under promise so that way you know, we don't promise something that's not going to happen. And then that ends up to over delivery. And that's actually, it says, I love referrals. And then uh, this guy that put on this conference, he's actually, it's okay, Lisa. He's actually a New York Times bestselling author. And um, he taught us how to have events. And our first event went so well that he invited me to be on his podcast. So episode 237, if you want to check it out. <laughs> I hope I get to go back. Uh, these are a couple of posters of our events. We have one coming up uh, mid-April. It's going to be the, the next annual uh, Grateful Playful. Um, I have my contact on here. Everyone's invited. So if you want to come, shoot me an email. Uh, Sun Power is, is a big part of who we are. It's actually the oldest solar manufacturer. Uh, it's a publicly traded American company. It's the only company that's been allowed longer than its warranties. Um, <clears throat> so I partnered with them because it is a new installer. Well, first, I just love ever since I got exposed to Sun Power, it's, it's the best. It's the only panel in the States that has this cradle to cradle environmental certification. They're running out of them. We still have some of them, um, but in terms of the whole package, Sun Power is where it's at and they've been uh, definitely instrumental in, in helping us get to where we are. My clicker's not working. This is huge too. So because of the way we do things and, and our values and our dedication to customer service, um, we actually got invited to be what's called a Pearl contractor. It is a third-party certification. It's like I'm getting pitchy, but this is actually like part of part of our journey because they. Uh, it's part of the problem with solar is that if you invest in solar, you did you might not. Some people aren't weren't getting added value to their house because if your neighbors haven't had it and sold it for more value. The appraiser typically only knows how to do comparables in your neighborhood. So actually, uh, it's a collaboration between all these people, Department of Energy Appraisal Institute, um, the Association of Realtors. Yeah, there it is. So solar actually will add value to your house because it's a cost avoiding asset, meaning that when you get solar, you stop paying money to your utility company. And that's why the Appraisal Institute is allowed to let appraisers add value to your house. So when people get solar with us, they actually get an addendum that goes on file on the MLS. You give it to the appraiser and it gives them all of the data they need to give more value to your house. So it's, it's, it's like an extra benefit in of that decision. So um, one of the reasons I wanted to be Photon is because we're fully integrated. So instead of, okay, I signed up with you that this name's on the contract, but this guy's doing the work where what's called fully integrated. So when you become our customer, we send out a, a technician that does a survey. You can see all the measurements on the left there. That's a drone shot with all the measurements so we can like space the panels. We look at the electrical. Um, that top one is like an engineering report from an electrical engineer that has all the diagrams, all this many watts, this many amps that we use for the permit. And then that's our uh, van <laughs> that the guys show up in your house. We source all the materials, we do all the permits. And it's actually our employees that show up and, and do the work, which I'm super, super proud of because it's not too, like most of the industry is, is, the, is the broker model. So the fact that we have everything in house and you're our customer if you sign up is what I appreciate. 
Uh, so year one, $8,000 operated at a loss. One employee, me. I guess technically the other employee uh, was my wife. And then the second year we got to 254,000 with only my wife and I, it's like official members of the company, but we had sales contractors. Last year we broke a million. I, I didn't think we would. And we actually just barely got past it. And we actually got up to eight employees uh, last year. Um, on the left, that's my wife, followed by Amy, who's our executive vice president. She's in the audience. Uh, she was in sales and she saw help that I needed help. And she said, I'm tired of sales. Let me be a manager. And I said, heck yeah. <laughs> and then um, C. Bonet is in the middle. Didn't have a black and white picture of her. She's our um, operations manager. And then Kelly and Shane are our two most uh, senior salespeople. And uh, we're just organically attracting people because of, you know, we're not... We're not trying to pull a curtain over people. We're not saying whatever. We're being honest with all the costs and how the tax credits work. I, I, there's, I had a customer um, who has already signed up for solar. A real estate friend said, I'm so sorry he signed up for someone else. Can you make sure he's getting a good deal? This 22-year-old sales guy from another company uh, told him he was going to get a $19,000 check from the federal government for going solar. Not how it works. It's a, it's a tax credit, so it reduces your tax liability. This guy was on disability because he worked in the uranium mines outside of Gallup, did not have tax liability, was not going to get a $19,000 check. He was going to end up paying $40, $40 a month more for solar than his average bill. So, so we got him out of that. And, and that's just the reason why we didn't have some like new salespeople here in the crowd. And um, I don't know, it's great. We're doing something right. Uh, we're projecting $4.7 this year. And it's all kind of dependent on if um, the new salespeople buy in and if we can get to have <laughs> another crew. But oh, it's working. So this one maybe we can move the chat. So that uh, that's my presentation. Um, <clears throat> challenges right now: uh, growing the new customer volume, obviously, because um, right now we're doing good. We're healthy. But if we can get to an average of 26 sales a month and um, another crew, we get economies of scale. And that's when we're like really growing the bank and have more resiliency instead of like we're making it. Um, for new reps to believe in referrals, because we don't, most companies, they door knock or they buy leads and distribute them or they do online marketing. I did that for a year. I spent 60 grand on Facebook ads and, and made about 60 grand back. It's just not the way I want to do it. We, we want to do it with fun and relationships, but not all the new um, sales reps buy into that. They, they're kind of scared that we don't like give leads. Customer financing, like the loans our customers take out to get solar is getting expensive just because Fed rates. Um, cash flow, we got to buy anywhere from one hundred dollars to $300,000 worth of solar panels a month. <laughs> and that's, so that's a really big challenge. Um, our culture isn't always visible to the customer. We're kind of like a ragtag all-stars are. Our foreman, one's been doing solar for six years. The other one's been doing solar for 12 years. So they are like very senior in the industry and they get paid California wages. Um, but I don't know, I just made it up last night about Tag All-Stars. Uh, so we could use like a cleaner, more focused branding so that we people kind of can like get our message immediately and right away. Getting the word out breaks my heart that people are clicking on those kind of clickbait things and um, signing up with, with people who are kind of not giving him the full picture. And then SunPower is changing their model. So um, my asks are, if anyone knows experienced sales personnel, we, we can train on solar. We would rather someone have solar experience. But if someone is like likes sales and they're sharp, we, we, can, we can get them up and running quick. Um, energy auditor, we want to help people actually reduce how much electricity they need in the first place, which would be really cool. Um, we're looking for a client concierge, basically, so that way our salespeople can focus on sales. And once they make a sale, we have a dedicated person to keep them updated through, throughout the, the project management phase. I could use an executive assistant, um, a general contractor, or someone to sign off on one of our guys' hours because we have them. If anyone has any other referral groups, we're, we're in a lot of B&I groups. Um, you know, we do things like this. Uh, networking All-Star, if someone's a connector, I'm a pretty good connector. I know other connectors kind of makes fireworks, right? And then communities with audiences like um, One Million Cups, Fat Pipe, super happy that we decided to come check this place out. We're actually renting that office right there. 
the community that it brings is great. And I just say that because there, there are definitely a lot of misconceptions about solar, how it works, the pros and cons. Um, that Vivint, the company I was talking to about Vivint, they came in and just like took Albuquerque by storm and got in a lot of trouble and got a really bad reputation, especially amongst real estate. Uh, getting the word out, we can use an event planner because we do three or four events a year. And it's like a, it's hard to throw a big, awesome event. We do it good, but if we could have a dedicated person and then event sponsors, we actually sell sponsorships to our event. Last year, we got uh, 17 referrals for a real estate agent. I got five referrals for what, from one event, five referrals for a foot doctor, um, seven referrals for a dentist, like a lot from one event. And um, that's it. So that's my spiel. Obviously, question and answer time. Paul's going to lead us up. If you want to ask a question here in person, please get on camera and introduce yourself. We'll also take questions online. Um, I'm going to take down the, the share that I will copy your contact information, okay. Mark, and put it in chat for everyone. Cool. Paul, come on up. All right. So, hi, I'm hey. Paul Sauter. What's up, Founder and Chief Scientific Officer of Equacy. Mm -hmm. We develop and sell genetic tests for horses. So it's a comment. Um, I moved to New Mexico from Maine, so we didn't know anybody. And when we bought our house, our realtor was a great guy. And so we say, who do we call for plumbing? Who do we call for electrical? We always talk to the guy who sold us the house. So I'm thinking that's a really powerful method for referrals. Sure. When, right? Anybody else here bought a house, they talk to their realtor first. And yeah. They say, okay, who's, who's straight up as a contractor? Who's a crook? That's who you ask, right? You see everything. <laughs> Right, so yeah. that's my suggestion, and congratulations, Sun so, Grove. That's spectacular. Let me let me get clarity. So you mean like real estate people are good for us, or we should be a good, resource? Good, good for you. <laughs> yeah, because because if we wanted to put solar on our house, yeah. I have a bunch of people I would talk to. Yeah. You know, solar. Yeah, you know, Tom Solomon, <laughs> and and then. I would ask our realtor, you know, which of these solar companies has burned people and, and which, you know, which of them would you say never do business with yeah. them again? And I'm sure you're not on that list. Right. Will you introduce me to your realtor? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. So, but, but I think you want to go to a convention where it's realtors and you are the solar company there, right? And there aren't solar companies. You don't want to go to a convention of solar companies because then you're one of 20. Yeah. Cool. You want to go need realtors. Good idea. That's the suggestion. Kill it. I'm going to switch between online and in person. Okay. So uh, Sue Kalazi, I think you're next. Are we going to hear her? Yeah. Okay. Sue, do you want to ask your question? I didn't realize I was still muted. Sorry. <laughs> So good morning. Um, you're in a pretty crowded field and I'm wondering how you differentiate yourself when you're out there. I think that being fully integrated um, helps, but what does that mean to the customer? You know, you're a one-stop shop in other words, right? right. So right. How, how are you, what's your marketing message? Yeah, we're a one-stop shop in multiple ways. One, because most companies they're getting a panel from one manufacturer and inverter from another. And, and maybe even monitoring from a third, like monitoring the, the electricity that the system's making. So we're a one-stop shop because we're vertically integrated in terms of signing up and then getting installed. But SunPower actually has all the warranties are incorporated between the, the panels and the inverter. So they make the warranties um, a one-stop shop too. And um, I, think, I think definitely just using good equipment is a big uh, differentiator for us and, and our experience because solar, it's just getting out of hand how it's just sales companies have taken it over. Like that 22 year old I was telling you about, I mean, a lot of these national companies are here and they'll just hire anyone with two legs that can knock a door and they just give them a script. And these guys don't even necessarily know like the information and these companies just give them a lot of like non-answer answers. So I think, I think our experience, like I, I've been in solar for seven years and everyone on my team has been in solar for multiple years too. <laughs> I wanted to like ask those guys, especially any, any other differentiators you would say? Um, I think that you, I think that you encompass it pretty well. Okay. Yeah, the cradle to cradle certification is pretty huge um, right. in the panel value. So what that means is that from start of the process to end of the process, um, they're certified as being environmentally sustainable. Right. So they're going to break down at the end. They're not just going to sit there and put 
they're fully recyclable because a lot of solar panels, it's almost like hybrid car batteries. We don't know what we're going to do with them. The sun power panels are fully recyclable at the end of their life. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Mark, if I could also just add one of the things. Yeah, if people on Zoom so can't hear you guys back uh, there, so you're welcome to come up and talk. <laughs> we just want to make sure everybody can hear the sure. message. You know, I just wanted to say one of the things that's really interesting about sun power, this is a great brand for anyone who likes doing their own research. Right. I don't know about you guys, but like if somebody comes up to me and tells me, hey, this is the best thing ever, I'm like, okay, great. I'm going to trust but verify. Let me get back to you. So when you go online, SunPower has the highest Google reviews out of any other solar brand in the country, hands down. Um, in addition to that, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, it's got the highest percentage of Fortune 1000s that have used their products for their commercial projects. Yeah, Disney, Apple, um, GE, they all pick some power for their facilities. So ultimately, the way I like to think of it is when I see that, I'm like, okay, all these companies and all these people, they've already done the research. That makes then my uh, research a little bit easier because I'm looking around seeing what other people are saying. Other companies spend a lot of money doing their own research. So in that sense, SunPower really is the best brand out there that's reviewed by a lot of different sites. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay. Brian Steiner, and Open Some Custom Software. Hey, what's um, up? So I have a sandwich question slash comment. Okay. Um, when we bought a house and it had a solar system and it was installed by that Vivint behind Tay. And uh, it had maybe 70 pages worth of loan documentation and zero pages of technical so we had no idea what the solar system was, the functionality, anything. Um, wow. You know, it was kind of a crapshoot, right? And we worked with our realtor. He had no idea who could do a solar inspection. Yeah. I wanted to call a solar inspector. <laughs> Called about 10 different electricians. None of them did it. They wouldn't come and inspect the, the solar system. I, you know, I called a couple of solar companies. They said, no, we sell. You know, we don't do these inspections. Yeah. Um, and of course, I didn't want to call the company that had been paid to do it, the install because then <laughs> um, so I called Marlene because she does solar and uh, we sort of put together a solar inspection. She wasn't really a thing that she did regularly or ever. So I, you know, we kind of made that up and figured out and I asked for some concessions yeah. based on her finding, but that service would be something you might consider offering. Sure. So that would be your in with the realtors. You could even offer a solar training for an hour or two of continuing education That's and the realtors idea. would pay to learn about these different points of the solar system for when a guy like me is buying a house with solar yeah. and i don't know anything about it right and it's like that's a really good idea that company was horrible right it's a loan servicing company yeah. like i'm not going to call them about upgrading anything i just you know i don't want to avoid the probably non-existent warranty that they're not going to provide service on but yeah. you know it's it, it it's something and the price wasn't so high that it was like a deal breaker. I was like, well, if this doesn't work, I can rip off the solar panels and burn them and still buy the house. Sure. Right. But I didn't want to do that. So yeah. well, maybe you could be our first solar inspection guy. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> well, I already got it. But, yeah, yeah. Good. Was there, was, there, was there a question too? Um, do, you, do you offer that service? We, we, we actually have done it before, but I think like your idea of making it known to like realtors and even on our website that that it is a service would be a super good idea. Thanks man. Nice nice video. Lisa Jackson, you're up next. Hi. Hi, thank you. Um nice to see you, Mark. Um, my name is Lisa Jackson. I'm with Envive Solutions. I'm sorry I don't have my video on today. Um but I my uh my comments are a little bit in alignment with what's already been said, but maybe uh from a, a slightly different angle. I'm curious about if you market to corporate clients, uh, particularly thinking about like small healthcare organizations where they're looking to, you know, healthcare is kind of moving toward this green, you know, uh, wave, if you will. So that's yeah. question one. And then question two, and I apologize if I missed this, I came in a little bit late, but I'm really curious about your why not just the quality of your product, but what's your why? What gives you passion about doing this work? And do you share that with your customers? Thank yeah, you. absolutely. I, I, I probably could share it more, but my why was the environment. Um, I was working three part-time jobs. My wife was pregnant with our first kid. I wasn't making enough money so that way she could take time off. So I just kind of had to sit down and I thought, okay, what do I want to do? What would I be happy about? 
that I wanted to do something that got me outside, helped other people be able to appreciate the outdoors or it was environmental conservation. The only thing I was finding like on LinkedIn was like a GIS, which I was like, well, that's like a whole nother thing. But then I don't know, you know, that book, like the secret, you put the energy out there and it comes. It almost seemed like that happened because then I, I met some solar guys at a networking event and, and that's how I got into solar. So the environment was definitely my why, which is another reason why we chose to um, use sun power. And then we don't actively market to businesses um, because our, our marketing strategies are networking, word of mouth, referrals and events. But we, but we do have um, commercial jobs in the pipeline. Um, all of our guys have done commercial installs and um, we now have a, a commercial consultant. So, and just so you guys know, if, if you have a business, not only do you get federal and state tax, but you get um, an accelerated depreciation, which means you can claim the lifetime of depreciation on the solar panels as quick as your tax appetite will let you. So it's like super good deal. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Hey, Hi. I'm Mark. My name is Marlene Brown. So I am... Uh, I've been working in photovoltaics about 30 years, yeah. and wow. I'm currently teaching at CNM, so I have the only program in the state. Wow. But I got to start with a few few things to just correct the record. So sure. I don't think SunPower is the oldest module manufacturer. Okay. They are a U.S. manufacturer, and they're great, and they've been yeah. around a long time, but they're not the oldest. Okay. Definitely. Who's the, who's the oldest? I know Siemens has been around <laughs> a lot longer than that, but there's been, I mean, there's sure. plenty of others that have come and gone. Sure. For them, so are they're there, good are there, manufacturer because yeah. they're US. Are there any that are here that are still around that are older than SunPower? Don't know. I mean, don't know, but I'm, I'm a, sure. So, anyway, so good. I'm glad you're using US stuff. Cool, they do have a good reputation, they're yeah. very expensive, right? Uh, none of the tariff stuff has gone into play yet, and that's been on stay until next year. Good, so that hasn't actually taken place, and it's not because of child labor, it's because of tax avoidance. To the oh, US. interesting. Yeah, you should. But, but you can you, look more on that. Yeah. They're not saying there's no child labor because that <laughs> stuff exists, no, but that's not. not what that's about. Okay. Okay. And that's, um, yeah. So, so something to look into. But anyway, one thing you can, um, it's good that you're here doing PV. Oh, one last thing about recycling. Yeah. All the modules are recyclable, all of them. You have to actually recycle them. Okay. And the problem with recycling them, because SunPower doesn't take back their modules and mm -hmm. recycle them, uh, what you have to do is you actually have to send them to a recycling facility. I have friends that actually have a recycling facility in Tucson. Awesome. And it costs people, you know, each company to, money to send them to the recycling company. Yeah. To, and, and which is why most of the contractors don't do it. Okay. If it was included into the cost of buying the module, it would happen. Sure. But that's not true. So you can say that it's recyclable, but they're all recyclable. What happens is people don't look. So there's hundreds of thousands of modules out there that aren't getting Where recycled. Where do they go? Landfills? They're going, yeah, look. So they go to landfills. They go, uh, a lot of times they get buried on site because it's cheaper for them to do that than to ship it to right. an actual recycling facility. So that's something, it's hard to- I wish that would have gotten included in the tax credits. Uh cycling part well, I guess what we need to do is put it in the upper end costs it's a contract it could, it could tax credit, yeah. but anyway we can talk at some point sure i would love to so a couple things if you want to um uh be included more in the community you should join the renewable energy industry association okay because they look at environmental legislation you know for especially for photovoltaics in our state okay. and they're they're sponsoring some bills right now right in the legislative session at the end of each semester, I, I um, invite employers to come to my meetings. Okay. Uh, I'm part of the trade, so a lot of my students are going to go on to be journeymen, and lots of folks come and give up job opportunity. Anybody who has an opportunity for my students, yeah. I let them talk to my students. So Yeah, that's us for sure. You, so I always go to the industry association, okay. and I can get your card. You can always come and talk yeah. to them because that's coming up. Um, but anyway, we can talk at some other time. Okay, right? I would love to. Yeah. Okay, so, so nice to meet you. So yeah, maybe change a few things in your message, but okay. good job. Yeah, we want to have the right, the, the truth. Is there another online? Nope, you're good. Hi, hey, I'm Miriam. Hey, I'm Mark. Um, I'm with More Than Organized. Um, I think of all your asks, branding should be your next priority. Okay. <laughs> because 
so many of your things, especially in referral marketing, yeah. rely on your messaging. Yeah. And if you have that in alignment, everything else kind of falls into place. Um, that was going to be my question <laughs> coming up, but everybody had such great things. So Paul's thing with the realtors, there's the Albuquerque Board of Realtors, definitely contact them. Each of the larger real estate companies also has concierge services. Mm -hmm. You have to pay to be in there. So it's a oh, little bit of an issue, yeah. but it's something to look into because if you can find a couple great realtors, you're kind of set. Um, I think there's still a Green Chamber of Commerce. Is there still a Green Chamber of Commerce? Um, you should check out that. And uh, I feel like there was one other thing. Oh, myth busting. If you go on Google, are you, you know, I assume you have Google listing. Yeah. Um, maximize that and get reviews and referrals through that, but you can post videos about myth busting about mm -hmm. solar and it'll set you apart from everyone else in town. Okay, myth busting. Yeah, I love that. And when you connect with Marlene and get the actual facts yeah. nailed down, it'll it'll be extra. Right? Cool. Sue, do you have Thank another you so comment? Much. Sue Pulasny? Yes, thanks. Um, a couple of things you might I don't know that anybody's doing something with those recyclable solar materials, but it'd be interesting if there is something you could create that um, to reuse them. Also, if you're not a member of uh, RIA, which is the Renewable Energy Industry Association, I suggest that you join and I can introduce you to their executive director. Great. Okay. Yeah, I would super appreciate that. Absolutely. His email's in chat, Sue. Hi, Mark and Chadwick. Mark, uh, Comunicaciones Coca Pelli. I don't know if you were one of the two guys that uh, knocked on my door one day. I don't know. They were really lucky because instead of buying solar, I sat them down and told them how to sell. It was great. They were lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I would have shut the door on you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I sell. So I got to, I got to, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not going to get solar until I can get all the cash from the energy that I generate. I don't want a God bless it credit that's not even creditable to my children. I want to overbuild up front. I want to anticipate my Tesla. Yeah. And I want to build to generate the electricity for my Tesla right. and then get the money and put it in the bank so that I can buy my Tesla. Okay. Okay. So I don't know where you are at in terms of your involvement with uh, the politics around this. But mm -hmm. I think that's a great place for you to identify uh, prospects. Uh, so, uh, by people who are getting EVs. Uh, kind of, yeah. You know, 350.org might be a group to be involved with. But uh, so I also, you know, I don't know if you're watching, uh, there's local choice energy. Yeah. What's and, anything that's you know, so the utilities are pushing back against all of us being able to truly implement distributed mm -hmm. solar. Mm -hmm. Once my Tesla's in my driveway with its solar gain roof so that it's actually driving, you know, anyway, yeah, all that's in the future. The other reason I'm not going to get solar yet is because my envelope is not fully insulated, right? So I got Miller's insulation out. Cool. They insulated the whole roof. Did that make a big difference? Not, not as much as I had hoped, hmm. but I know I got other holes, so I got to have yeah. more money and I'm going to insulate the whole floor. Yeah. You mentioned energy audits. Right. I think that uh, you want to not only schmooze real estate people, you know, you mentioned events. I think you should throw some industry specific events, invite a bunch of realtors to the sawmill and educate them, etc. But also, I think you might want to tie in with Miller Insulation. Okay. And see if you can't get a core. Or, and, and I think they're the best in town. They've been around the longest. That's why you yeah. yeah. But uh, get a relationship with them so that once somebody's feeling like their envelope is ready, right. uh, then you guys can. And, and when you're doing your audits, you say, well, you know, solar will save you, well, whatever. But your house is really, you know, yeah. leaky. You might talk to my friends at Miller and do some of that stuff because it all goes straight back to your why. That's exactly what I'm what I'm hoping to do. Is, that was something else. I think that's it. Thanks. No, that's great. Appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Well, I'm Sonia Doing. Hey. I am CEO of Women's Thriller Writers Association. Oh, cool. Great presentation this morning. Thank you. Um, and so I have some specific things. I know um, some people do love to research, but there's also other people who just want to a one-stop to look at 
everything. Right. And I know I did notice on your website it doesn't connect to your Facebook page, and I think that's yeah. having a Facebook page and having social proof. Sure. Is a great way for people to say you're a real company. Right. Um, one thing I noticed is that ninety nine percent of your photos have no faces, in them. Uh, <laughs> and your video, your YouTube video. Like no people, and I think that's one of the things that differentiate you from the other solar companies. Yeah, people, you who you are, and who your team is, and the people that you hire. So, like having a few more faces in your in your images would be great. Okay. Um, and then connecting. Someone said that you had a lot of great Google reviews. I think uh, even just having a link to those in your website so Good people idea. can find them easily. Okay. And meanwhile. I have someone here in Elkhart who is really great at branding and messaging, and I will connect you to her. Please, yeah, that's, that's cool. All right, thank great you. Great idea. <laughs> thank you, you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Actually, Andrew is a better than Okay. Okay. I'll go. I'll go. That's good. Yeah, I'm Dr. Norm with Dr. Norm's Connections, and I'm in the dementia prevention business. It's nothing to do with solar. However, it's a possibility I could get solar, but. You know, like Abe Lincoln says, never trust anything that you read on the internet. <laughs> so I want to come to you as a source, but I have seen a couple of articles or something on the internet or your email that says PM is really trying to control the solar industry by saying, no, we're not going to allow this house or these houses to have access to solar. So we're going to charge you extra or something. So can you clarify that? I thought it come to the source. Just the right information. Yeah, so it has to do with like the deeper infrastructure of the grid. Um, there's actually a website where you can go and you can plug in your address and they can tell you whether or not they have um, room on what's called the feeder. Because <clears throat> going backwards from your house, you've got a line to a transformer and then that goes, I don't know the exact, she would know it better than me, but, and and, and, I, and I was skeptical too. I thought, oh, well, PM's trying to, Stop us, you know. What I mean, but I actually got to speak with um, right. that manages not only the website but but calculating that, and it's 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 literally just a safety issue. Like if a wire or a transformer or a piece of electrical equipment is only made for a certain amount of electricity, you can't you can't overload it because it could melt and it could cause a fire and it could cause blackouts. So I wish I wish the website was easy to find. Um, you know, if you email me, I, I can um, I can. Share it with you, or, or I can share it on something yeah, <laughs> on the one million cups your, or, or your, on our Facebook. Your website? Um, no, website? no, it's a, it's a P and M website that maybe I can share on with that pipe or something. Or what, you know that would be good me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. yeah, because they will. What when when we apply for someone to be connected to the grid, oh. they they go through different phases of review. One is just looking if the application is complete. All the I's are dotted, T's are crossed, the electrical diagrams are there. And then it goes to an engineer who calculates, okay, can your house, can your breaker panel, can the transformer, can the feeder handle, it's called back feed. And if it can, then they just say, sorry, we, we won't let you tie your solar panel system to the Yeah, yeah. Thanks, I appreciate your passion and your love. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Doc. Come on up, this will be our last question. <clears throat> okay. Hi, hi. hi. Um, I'm Ann. I'm Mark. actually visiting. I used to live in Albuquerque oh. and I live in DC. But in listening to this, I was on my condo board in DC and we did go solar. Yeah. But the best thing I found was there are community management associations that have conferences. And so we would go and get like, lots of information about the heating and the vendor, um, vendors there who talked about what they did. So New Mexico has that. Sure. That would tap you into HOA. That's not you said, but right. you would tap into HOA. Right. Like so you may want to think about. The community management association. Okay, community management association. Oops. Okay, nice to meet you. <laughs> awesome. Anybody online? Last question. All right. So we have two last questions, actually. Okay. Uh, red or green? Ooh, I'll go green. And what's the one thing this community can do for you, like today? Like, what can we do to start helping? Um, let us know if. They're thinking about solar. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or if they know anyone that's thinking about it. Okay. Yeah. Great job, Mark. Cool. Yeah. 15 minutes left. I think Paul wants to say something. Shout outs. Uh, shout outs. Let's do some shout outs. Yeah, so uh, it's important to have shout outs to recognize that it takes a village to raise an entrepreneur. 
And uh, every once in a while, we like to give people an opportunity to thank the people who've helped them along in their journey. Uh, tomorrow, there's a very exciting event. I know it's an event, not a shout out, but hey, try to take me off the stage. Uh, and that's the ski lift. That's, oh boy, well, no, I, roller derby, I don't mess with that. Okay, so uh, ski lift pitches tomorrow. The 12 competitors are on this list. Uh, I'll put that right on the table or pass them around. Um, it's the strongest group of companies I think we've seen for ski lift pitch in years. Uh, this is the opening of a unprecedented boom in startups in New Mexico. A lot of federal money is coming in. Watch these guys. I'll still give you three to one on circular genomics. I'll also give you three to one on RIA space activity. If anyone wants to take the other side and bet against those guys, let's see who's a sport. Shout outs, more shout outs. Shout out. Um, so I'm Dr. Jessica Choi, and I actually have two uh, people that I want to thank for their work. Um, first and foremost, JJ, um, I can't thank you enough for all the help that you gave me. Um, if you don't know, my car got hit by a CenturyLink truck back in July, um, and it was parked. My car was parked. I was not in it. It was in front of my driveway, um, and it ripped the whole front end off of my car. Um, so thankfully the, the company, you know, admitted fault. There was no problem there. Um, but it was getting parts that has been the problem. Um, and I had been waiting, my car had been in the shop since August to get parts for my car. Um, and they just kept saying, oh, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And I said, okay, enough with the waiting. So I talked to JJ after one million cups one day, about three weeks ago, something like that. And he got on it. He, I told him what happened. He contacted the dealership. He contacted the garage. I think he called VW itself. And before I knew it, my car is now in my possession again. <laughs> and without JJ's help, I really think it would still be sitting at the shop. Like, well, that's how it is. But you know, like we just don't have the parts. So if you need anything automotive related, call that man because he's super helpful and. Yes, pay him all the money. <laughs> um, second shout out is for Jason. He gave me some nice new uh, headshots last week, which I really love. And so, you know, not to be nepotistic a little bit, um, but for headshots, they were great. He made Sonia look good too. He made Sonia look good. You said I don't look good. <laughs> it was easy. Um, Jason's just to soak up all the love today oh, because he awesome. also, in addition to doing great photos, we should take a picture of mine. Um, he gave me some just feedback and basic help on my Google listing last week, and I've already started implementing, and hopefully it'll work great. But it was very clear and straightforward. Good advice from Jason. Thank you, Jason. Anybody else? Anybody online have a shout out? I'll give a shout out to Carrie Bender with the city because she's been sending us more entrepreneurs and we really appreciate that collaboration. All right, any newbies? We still have a little bit of time. If you've never been to One Million Cups before, you can come back up, introduce yourself, and <laughs> tell us how you uh, how you found us. Come on. And our visitor, I know you're just visiting, but come on up. Anybody online new? Elijah, get your booty up here. <laughs> well, we're all we're all with Mark. Yeah. So Elijah and and me work. So I come in. I work in the office with Mark most days. These days, I'm Amy. Um, and yeah, this is my first time at One Million Cups, but it's been awesome. It's it's so cool to find something like this. So thank you so much for having Mark. And yeah, yeah we're she does it just to work in the office. Yeah. She's the executive vice president. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally have a key for you today too. Oh. Awesome. Cool. So nice to meet you all. Cool. All right. So again, I'm Anne, and I'm visiting. Um, I dropped my husband off here. He's co-working here today. That's right there. <laughs> Albuquerque native. Oh. Um, and Albuquerque high. Uh, but anyway, so I uh, dropped him off for the co-working and stayed for one million cups out of curiosity, and I'm very impressed because I don't have an entrepreneur in the building. Nice. Good work. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I did not put events together, but uh, Jason Barnett's leadership series, those of you who 
haven't signed up yet, starts tomorrow. So it's going to be 11.30 here right at Fat Pipe ABQ. And the first of the six-month series is what type of leader are you? He's already got 16 or 17 people signed up, so I think it should be a great workshop. Um, if you need a link to that, let me know. And anybody else have events they want to share besides who's going to win a ski lift kit? No, it's not a cookie bake off. Sorry, Jason. I'm Barbara Dawson with Purple Mulch. And next month on the 7th and the 14th, I'll be doing a two part series on authentic communication. So we're, we're doing that on a Tuesday from 11 to 2. It's a three hour event through CNM. And then that Thursday night, the start of Fiesta. That's everybody's encouraged to go there. It's a place where lots and lots of entrepreneurs are going to be there. It's a great place to network. And then the following Tuesday, we'll be coming back together again and say, how'd you do at the network? So that's what's coming up in, in March for me. We'd love to have you come. Go to CNM's site and go to events. And you should see that. Yes? Oh, I've got, I've got it. Come on up. So first of all, I have a close connection with the solar the commercial solar company in San Jose, and they need oh. commercial or residential leads. Great. So send me an email, and I will connect. Okay, perfect. Um, so um, I am Carrie Vendor, City of Albuquerque, small business liaison um, under economic development. Um, so I just wanted to announce we're still nailing down dates and locations, but we're going to have um, during the months of April, May, and June um, in every quadrant of the city, we're going to have a small business resource fair. Um, so we're looking for um, people that want to booth there to, if you offer a service to small businesses, um, you can send me an, an email. Uh, my email address is cvendor at cmq.gov. Um, so we'll, I'll uh, give Lisa the information when we have it um, nailed down, but it'll be every quadrant of the city over a three month period. So oh, that's, that's, cool. that's coming up. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks. Hi, come on up. I have an event. My name is Rosemary Quinns, and some of you might know that I have been looking for an art studio pretty much ever since or before I arrived in New Mexico towards the end of last year. And a couple of months I found pretty perfect art studio, half a block from where I live in North Hill. And we are having a block party uh, the first Sunday in March. That's March the 5th from 11 to 4. And my studio will be open for the first time. Hopefully it will be ready. Perhaps it's not yet. Um, and my, my landlady, who owns a business called Forage, that imports uh, Moroccan rugs and other paraphernalia from Morocco, that place will be open. And every, all the um, businesses, the restaurants, the galleries, and so on and so forth will be open. And we'll also be having a fabulous yoga teacher teaching in our space. Uh, Give us the address. And the address yeah. is 122 Green Mall. So it's in the block between Central and Silva and um, heading down towards Harlem. Awesome. And again, right. the date, please. Rosemary. The date is March the 5th. That's the first Sunday in March. In March. In March. Yeah. I don't know how you pronounce it. Thank you. All right. You picked this off, but can you? Oh, sure. I can can you take this out? out? Hold it up. Um, it's been a great week for entrepreneurship. Been a great week for entrepreneurship. We're really looking forward to see what happens tomorrow and uh, with some of those companies in the year to come. Uh, next level down, I, I think you can see to, to today's presentation that was really helpful to you, right? People have all kinds of ideas and leads that you didn't think of, and we're going to talk a little bit after as well. So that's what we're here for. Um, come back next week and in between now and then, see if you can reach out and help out some entrepreneur in the community with your knowledge. Thank you and see you again next week. Bye. <laughs> I remember I don't